Welcome to an evening with PodCamp. I'm Norman Hillsman, and uh, I want to thank everyone for coming. So this is a, this is an experiment this evening, the first of many, I hope. Uh, well, we want to do uh, six evening with PodCamps this year, uh, with the, which is a response to the overwhelming uh, desire for meetups, tweetups, greetups, uh, whatever, throughout the year uh, to keep the PodCamp community connected, and you know. Right after PodCamp Pittsburgh this year, uh, the organizers went out for a kind of, ah, it's over, sort of a let's grab a quick bite uh, situation. And we were talking about, well, what would we do? Like, let's make it more special than just another bar meetup or, you know, tweet up in a bar or whatever. And uh, so we kind of had this wild idea, well, what about an evening with PodCamp where we do something a little bit more special than just, you know, gather at a bar, grab some drinks, and high five each other, and then we go home every night. So, uh, you know, I, I kind of had the idea to let's let's do a session. Let's give you something that is PodCamp Pittsburgh and give you a reason to to come out outside of just you know drinking with some some PodCampers. So uh, thanks for coming. Uh, so hopefully this is the first of, of many events, and we want to do six this year. So hopefully uh, that goal isn't too ambitious. And um, and so yes, uh, feel free to come in and sit down, guys, if you're on the who are back there. Um, I wanted to give you a quick State of the Union, I guess, uh, snapshot, you know, PodCamp Pittsburgh uh, 5 this year had 400 attendees, uh, which was the most we'd ever had at one event, which is pretty cool. And then we had, I'm not 100% sure the exact number, but Spike from Vivo told me we had anywhere from 1,500 to 2,500 people online watching the event. Um, so that's a wide <laughs> uh, range, but um, we're still waiting to try to figure out exactly how. So I'm telling people we had 2,000 people attend PodCamp Pittsburgh from home across the world. Uh, it was international uh, attendance online, according to Google. And to give you an idea about how many people that really is, so we had 400 people, if you were at PodCamp Pittsburgh, 400 people attend the event physically there. In each room, the, the stats, there were almost that many people who were at the whole event in each room every single day. So it was like its own pod camp in each room. So if that kind of gives you some perspective. So we're really excited about that and I just wanted to share that. So, so thank you for that. Um, another thing, uh, we're uploading the videos. We're still in the process of uploading every session from PodCamp Pittsburgh 5 this year. I know Mike Sorg is working diligently on getting that uploaded and um, you know I've been having fun you know checking them out uh, each evening as, as he uploads them. I think we're about halfway done. Uh, we should uh, be done by the end of uh, the year. No, I don't know. We should be done soon. Uh, I'm looking at him right now. And, and uh, But no, it's you know we're doing one a day and we're working through each room at a time. So I hope you guys are also uh, enjoying that. And then finally, uh, my last bit of housekeeping is uh, back to an evening with PodCamp. Our next event will be on January 13th. Uh, so save the date for that. I don't have more information yet. I'm still working on a date. Uh, I would have liked to have more uh, to tell you tonight, but I personally had some things going on in my life that kind of prevented me from focusing my all of my attention on an evening with PodCamp this week. So uh, without further ado, <clears throat> I'd like to get to our tonight. Tonight's guests, the reason you guys are here. Uh, I have two of Pittsburgh's finest. Uh, they have dedicated their lives to helping Pittsburgh wake up in the morning, uh, get to work on time, <laughs> and start each day with a little gossip. Uh, you know, listening to Kate Perry and Lady Gaga has helped me wake up in the morning. I've been listening to them every day this week and uh, learning about their special guests who we get underneath the beds with other young ladies and, and interviewing Bill Clinton, which is, you know, very admirable. Uh, they almost need no introduction, but tonight I give you the men responsible for the man boob song, fish filet wrap, I'm in a Snuggie, ball shorts, and cake in a break room, 96.1 KISS FM's Morning Freak Show, Mikey and Big Vibe. You want that one or? Yeah, I'll take this one. Okay. I got it. Oh, and I, I, I there you go. Oh, oh. If, I, if I break the chair, it's going to make it for good video. Chachi's so. got it. Chachi's got the video ready. Uh, there we go. All right. All right. Welcome. Good. How are you guys feeling tonight? Hello. 
Your microphone's like better than ours that we broadcast with in the morning. Yeah, I might I actually. Way, guys. You guys are gonna need to enunciate. I forgot to tell you that before. Okay, yeah. It's we, kind of echoey in here, so. Okay. Hello. All right, let's get started. All right. So, I so, like the table. <laughs> it's nice. Right. All right. All right. <laughs> I'm glad you. I'm glad you're okay with that. Yeah. Uh, so you know. Uh, you and I, we've played softball together, um, <laughs> but uh, I, you know, I've grounded a few, taken a few ground balls and thrown to Mikey and uh, you know, got some third base coaching advice from Bob. I think he even uh, drove me on a run once or twice this year, but outside of the ball field, uh, you know, we, we don't know each other very well. So I, I, you know, preparing for tonight, I thought, you know, I need to, um, you know, find out more about you guys. So I found some interesting facts oh, uh, right. about you, Did and you I wanted to show us or something like that. <laughs> I did Wikipedia you. That's where wow. I started. And there is no freak show, morning show Wikipedia page, which I thought about creating. But maybe you know someone will want to go home tonight and work that on that. That could get real dangerous with yeah. the amount of lies people could post about us. And stuff well, like that. I would hate to police that. Yeah. Well, you know, w Wikipedia doesn't allow you to edit your own. Page. Oh, so if true. you try to log in, that's they would shut you down. That's true. So um, I did search Freak Show, and Wikipedia did give us some interesting results. I don't know if you want um, to search that. And there was well, a whole safe, list of Freak Shows. Safe search on or safe search <laughs> off? Well, I did. I'm. You know. Well, it was. It was. It wasn't even worried. I wasn't even worried about that actually. <laughs> um, the first. The first Freak Show return was Britney Spears. Uh, which apparently she has a song called uh, Freak Show. Yeah. So written about us after us probably. Yeah, after us. Yeah. And uh, the official Freak Show definition by Wikipedia is an, exi an exhibition of rarities. So <laughs> I think that 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 says something special, right? If you look at our shapes, we're yeah. Perhaps. But actually, the one Pretty thing of rare. note there was there were, there was many things that um, you could go through this list that are on, on you know. But there's one thing that did stand out, and, uh, and this was in the other category. Uh, and in 1997, uh, believe it or not, the Pittsburgh Pirates, a Major League Baseball team, were nick nicknamed Freak Show due to their unexpected uh, performance. <laughs> so, you know, perhaps that... Uh, wow. First five minutes, and compared to the Pirates, this is... <laughs> it's going well. Yeah, this is awesome. <laughs> we didn't know continue. we were coming here to take a beating. Good Lord. I, I just thought that that was interesting, and um, you know, I never knew that. So where where does the the freak show name come from? Actually, Ugh. I honestly don't even. Bad know. Radio Land. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Honestly, it kind of stuck. I don't know. Um, so you didn't come up with it? Uh I don't remember if we came up with it or not. Maybe a boss gave it to us a long time ago, like a long. We didn't time ago. want like a a real super cheesy like name, but. When we first started, you kind of have to name your radio show, mm -hmm. and it's kind we of like branding. You know? Yeah, right, right. exactly. Well, like so. most morning shows that I can think of are like you know, the Morning Zoo or something or like, like that, or Rob and Bob and yeah, yeah, the High Five Homies. <laughs> <laughs> Mike and Bob, the High Five Homies, really should have been our show. Change, yeah, if we ever change, that's an option. <laughs> yeah, I really don't know where the name Morning Freak Show came from. I think it just like started one day. Right. I, I really don't know. There's no good story to the freak show. Uh, no. Well, I'm disappointed. I was hoping that I, I was hoping that would eclipse the pirates. Actually, no. nothing very sexy. Yeah. yeah. No. Well, or maybe it was like the pirates. Like you were pirate fans, and um, no, not, no, we, connection. No. No, no, no connection. No connection okay. at all. No. I don't know. All right. Well, I guess just our odd shapes, and we're a little weird. So <laughs> yeah. I guess we're freak, a little different. Yeah. Yeah. Freak show is a good way to describe us. Sure. And then we're on in the morning. So well, that's sense. interesting you said because the first time I ever remember coming in contact with you is I was walking down the boulevard of the Allies and I saw a bus shelter and it had a, a large gentleman dressed in a tuxedo rather tall and then another shorter gentleman dressed in a wedding dress and it said freak show yeah and I had to look at that for years that was the first billboard we ever had in Pittsburgh mm -hmm. yeah it was our wedding billboard right. we were, I was in the dress <laughs> <laughs> we but wanted the, to just kind of do something different I guess instead of the I guess cheesy radio picture where it's like you know, next to a microphone or something. Right. So we're like, I don't know. It's cross dress. It was that we were actually both getting. Me and Bob are like super best friends. We best we grew up together and everything mm -hmm. like that. 
and we were actually getting married at the time that they said, oh, you guys can have billboards. We're like, sweet, yeah, what are we going to do? Wedding dresses, yeah. yes. <laughs> and it just seemed like, well, what do you guys want to do? And we were both getting like married at the time, not to each other, though. We actually have like girls who actually like us that have seen us naked before and everything. Oh, really? Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> never, never, yeah, go ahead. No, I, I know, I know we're going to finish my them. sentence there. Well, right? naked, it kind of We've never up. seen each other naked. Wow. Great. So, <laughs> this is weird now, huh? <laughs> Maybe some of the ladies. She looks like she has a question like already. Yeah, yeah, don't wanna... tweet your poop. Yeah, um, but so, no, we were just both getting married at the time. We um, both got married at the same time, and our bosses were just like, "What do you guys want to do for a billboard?" And we we're like, "Oh, we're you know we're talking about getting married and stuff on the show. Let's put pop in a wedding dress. I'll be in a tuxedo, and it'll kind of be like ta-da." And the company that puts those up is really lazy. Uh huh. Oh yeah. They have left that thing up for. I think there's still like one or two around the area that's up. Right. I think it's our a good com- seven years later. I think our company paid for it for about two months, and like people will still send us pictures like you guys are on this billboard. <laughs> People have drawn all over our faces and stuff. Yeah. That's People deface them and then send us pictures, though, of it. <laughs> That's, That's pretty fun. funny. So, how, I mean, how do you pitch that to your, to your execs? You know, you're like, okay, well, I'm thinking wedding dress. I'm thinking... Yeah. Nobody really understands what we do. Or what was the bad idea that happened? Uh, like, we I actually know? have a good 20 to 30 billboards that we've come up with before that have been denied. Okay. Yeah, so that, by like management or by the actual billboard company. <laughs> yeah. Like where there's like, we can't put this up. Yeah, Lamar advertising is like, eh. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, that's funny. So, well, you know, so I, that, I, since I couldn't find much on Freak Show um, in Wikipedia and even in Google, I stayed away from those results. Uh, but I, I start, so I looked for your names. So I, I started searching for your names, and I, I didn't know your last names, but I found them on Facebook. Right. So assuming that those are your real names, yeah, I, I you know I found some interesting. We don't hide very good namesakes. <laughs> yeah. So Mike, we'll start with you. Um, I found that you share a name with a screenwriter, uh, Michael Doherty, is that correct? Yeah, he comes up whenever I Google myself. Yeah, he I'm kind of proud of him. I kind of want to meet him. Right? Yeah. I don't know what movies he's ever made. He well, he's done porno. Superman Returns, X-Men 2. Oh, uh, so he's like fancy then, huh? Season's Greetings, uh, and then fancy ones like Urban Legends, Bloody Mary, and I, Lucifer. Wow. Uh, so he's a screen uh, writer, but I, I, don't, I couldn't tell if he also acted or not. But Yeah, he's like the only guy that comes up when I Google my like full name and everything. Yeah. Yeah. Well, right? well, also, well, well, while internet stalking you, I found 172 other people named Mike Doherty in Pennsylvania. Really? Yeah, yeah. They include lawyers and doctors. Yeah, wow. I'm kind of at the bottom of the barrel. Then. <laughs> Quite the disappointment. He you worked are. on X Men too. He's a lawyer. He's a doctor. He's with his fat friend in a wedding dress on a billboard. Yeah. Well, kind of failed at that one. It's kind of funny because you know you are you know you guys are not hard to find online. And, no. And but searching for your real names is can't find you. I couldn't. I mean, your Facebook didn't even come up, which is interesting uh, because I know that finding you guys is not an issue, right? You yeah. No, saying? it's not hard at all. Some people like on the radio like to hide, don't even use their real names. We have so many links to find us and get in touch with us and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. We don't hide from people at all. Yeah. yeah. So. Cool. Well, all right. Well, Bob, uh, Robert Mason, are you Bob no, or Robert? Bobby. You're Bobby. Did you search Robert? Well, oh no, no. <laughs> Everybody really thinks he's Rob. Or well, that's Rob. why I was clarifying because there was my middle name's Jerome. <laughs> that may have been helpful in my search, perhaps. But um, uh, actually, Named after a famous '70s pimp. <laughs> But his mom used to frolic with. <laughs> Jerome. How dare you? <laughs> Jerome is a beautiful woman. <laughs> you're, nice. you're nice. Well, the number one return for Bob Mason, which is what I did search for, was Robert Mason, who is a retired American ice hockey goaltender. And wow. uh, he was a member of the 84 Olympic U.S. hockey team. Yeah. So, yeah. I don't know him. Yeah. But unfortunately, he spent most of his career with the Washington Capitals. That's a shame. Oh, wow. yeah. Screw him. Then. Yeah. Wow. Uh, you know, I, too bad for skates. <laughs> yeah, I can't see it either. He doesn't come from that uh, I've never farm. Tried. <laughs> well, what was that movie? A uh, slap shot or sudden death? You could have been the goalkeeper to make the big save. You wouldn't. Yeah. 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 Mm. No. <laughs> <laughs> How about flying the helicopter through the? Mm. No. I don't like heights either. Okay. <laughs> Fat people supposed to stay on the ground, like, <laughs> and not on ice. Okay. It just doesn't work. So, so like, at a, least for me. Yeah. So like a Kevin Smith sort of don't fly, take the bus. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'll fly if I have to, but 
<laughs> for the most part. So, well, cool. What else did you find? I also followed, found uh, Bob Mason, who is a British actor, and he played in a bunch of stuff that's probably on the BBC, but I have no idea what the. You know, I didn't even want to bring it up because. No problem with that. <laughs> it's just uh, it's just unknown in America. I didn't have time to actually look into it. I tried to watch the original Office. Uh huh. I tried so hard. I'm like, this has to be awesome. Maybe I didn't give it a chance. I guess if you first watch your first like episode of like the American version of the Office, you'd be confused too. You know? Yeah. Kind of have to watch a few. I'm gonna give it another chance just for you though. Yeah. Whatever your name is, sir. <laughs> Styrofoam cup. Well, uh, it, <laughs> well, let, let me. Uh, actually, I have an office reference, but I'm gonna I'm gonna get to that in a second. Um, oh wow! Uh, sorry to spoil the the, the interview, uh, but but actually, in honor of Veterans Day, which is today, okay. uh, there is a uh, an important Bob Mason who wrote Chicken Hawk. Uh, which is uh, an acclaimed as the best book so far about Vietnam. Oh. So uh, apparently it's very famous in that. It's so. not related. <laughs> so. Or, well, maybe you wrote it. Not you never were in Vietnam. Or no, <laughs> no, no. Bob actually can't go in the military. I'm blind in one eye. Oh, really? Yeah. They won't let me in. Not even as a sniper because you only need one eye for that. No, it just doesn't work. I'm fat too. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of like two things that hold me back. Two and I have, a gimp, I have a gimpy leg. It doesn't work so well. Yeah. So it's not me. So you're not getting drafted anytime soon. No, no. Which is nice. I'll be here. Yeah. And I'm just too tall. I'd be an easy target. You know. Yeah. I guess I'd be the first to die probably. He's very quick though. Everybody Don't else. Me. Everybody else would you, be hiding in my head. Him. Would just yeah, be popping yeah. out. I have seen you run on the softball field. Definitely. I have long legs. There are like two people going at once. I'm like a six foot eight gazelle, a man yeah. gazelle. <laughs> Excellent. That's how I post on Craigslist too. <laughs> Looking for man gazelle to tame this Watch weekend. <laughs> I like to also be dressed up in diapers and be treated like a three-year-old. Baby powder optional. This is weird. This is it's weird. not though. It's not though. It's just true. I like you. It's gotten real personal. Oh. This explains why I couldn't find you guys on MySpace. It's actually. a good temperature in here, I see. <laughs> it's all natural. You can go right on the glass out there. <laughs> Well, you know, so that was me just, you know, internet stalking you guys to, to, to get to know you a little bit better. Yeah. And obviously, you learn a whole lot about a person by just No stalking. bad things came up, I'm surprised. Yeah. If you would have Googled Mikey and Big Bob, you would have got a lot of results. Well, we're going to get to that. Actually. Oh. <laughs> wow. All right, then. No. And actually, I couldn't, I had to do this all from home because I, I, my, my company blocks uh, your site. Anything yeah. related to you, I couldn't, I couldn't I, load I it up at all. I can't blame your company. Yeah. So. <laughs> So actually, no, I was shirtless in the front window about 15, 20 minutes ago. Yeah, so. we're going to have to link that video that's already online to, yeah. to this interview, right? Yeah. <laughs> We've already done damage here. So, so getting back to the Freak Show, uh, your morning show, um, you know, it's, it's interesting because I w I'm wondering, like, when do you start your day? Because it's hours before I even think about waking up, I'm sure. About 3.15, 3.30. That's pretty early. Yeah, yeah, that's when the alarm goes off. So then you, you get up that early. So when do you get to work then? Uh, I get thirty. -ish. Yeah, I get there probably about four fifteen or so. That's pretty early. So, are, so I'm, should I assume that you're morning people, or how's that go? Uh you never get used to it. No. You never get uh, used to like. I never like my alarm goes off at whatever three thirty, three fifteen. I never like look at it. Pop and just up go, and be like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> woo! It's three o'clock. Let's party. No, it takes me a little while to get there, but um. You never really get used to it, but by the time we actually start at 6 o'clock, we've been up for a few hours already, so we are woo party ready to go. You're caffeinated. The first time we talk at 6 o'clock, barely anybody else is awake, that's always our our best. best moment of the day. Best, it's, like, yeah. it's downhill from there because we're always just like, yeah, here we are, and all the fun stuff comes out. And so, so I should set my alarm for six a.m. Yeah, yes. just listen to like the first five minutes, go back to and sleep. Then yeah. 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 yeah, it's not it's worth downhill. listening after that. Yeah. 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 Okay. Well, that's good to know. That's good to know. <laughs> I guess uh, we. I guess we are morning people, though. Yeah. You kind of have to be yeah. forced. Yeah. Because I was gonna. My next question is, you know, do you feel creative better? Really? I think a lot of. What you who's who's phone? Who's phone? <laughs> Who did it? BBC. Who did it? BBC, your phone's going off, man. Come on. 
It was oh, the American man. ringtone. <laughs> it was. It was. I don't know if creative ever turns off or on. I don't know if there's like a special. There's never like creative time. Like when we were standing up there with uh, Scarehouse Scott, we're like, it came to our head that we need to make like a Christmas rap song. Okay. And that just kind of happens. You wow. Know? There's not like a a 3 a.m., 4 a.m., 5 a.m. Did you like, write the oh, rap song? Is, is it written? Is it in your head? No, so we came up with two rap songs that we need to write okay. over there with Scott. We said we need to write a Thanksgiving song um, about ham as if it's like a rap disc to turkey and why ham is better. Uh-huh. Kind of like an East Coast, West Coast thing <laughs> right, for right. Thanksgiving. Oh, no, I like it, yeah. It's not a bad idea, song. right? You know? Really Throw some swear words in there. The kids love meat and swear words. Well, if I offer a suggestion, you know, spam, um, Hawaii, people in Hawaii love spam. So maybe you could... Could be it, too. Yeah. You throw spam in there? At one point, ham could be like, I brought spam with me, you know? <laughs> Just right. in case. And Spam For just back comes up. and clears house. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like Batman and Robin, but like Ham and Spam. Mm-hmm. We'll have to auto-tune the part where we... Spam auto Spam comes yeah. in, yeah. Spam would be more of like a T-Pain in the song and stuff yeah. like that. And then what was the Christmas <laughs> rap we need to do? Drunk Office Lady. Oh, yeah. Drunk Office Lady rap and stuff like that. <laughs> kind of like Cake in the Break Room, but like a Christmas edition. Like Christmas room. sweaters and the whole deal. Right, right, right. That's how it happens. It doesn't make sense, but it happens. I always... I always go to bed though with my iPhone right next to me because I always like as my day's winding down that's for some reason when the most messed up stuff comes to me and I'll always like send myself like three emails before I go to bed and I'll wake up in the morning I'll just be like what the fuck just make no sense at all. Dude, yeah, so it's like that episode of Seinfeld where we like scribbled something down. And yeah, you know, oh yeah, you should see our office. There's just stupid ideas and bad ideas all over the place that just need to be and dolls and trinkets. And dolls, yeah. I have a Britney Spears doll in the right. office. Hi. Yeah. Well, freak show, right? Where was that? Yeah, yeah. tie it all back together. Right. Circle exactly. of life. Yeah. I have an MC Hammer clock in the office, too. I oh, bought it for $10 on eBay. It's pretty much the best purchase ever. It that's works, cool. and it says you can't touch this, and it has hammer and the hammer pants on it. I need to visit your office. It sounds like a great place. Yeah, it's unbelievable. I walk around in my underwear a lot. We have a, Jap- we have a Japanese slot machine in our office, too. No idea how it got there. No idea where we got it from. <laughs> Does it use yen? Is that how? Uh, it used like Chuck E. Cheese Chinese yeah. tokens. It's not like real money, okay. but when you pull it and hit the jackpot, it's the most amazing celebration <laughs> ever. It's like, <laughs> it's like flashing cats. Crazy and stuff. strobe lights. Yeah, it's like cat paws going and stuff like that. And it's so loud. The first time we ever did it, we almost we freaked like, out and unplugged it. I think. Yeah, we did. <laughs> it and then like, we plugged it back in. It was on still. Yeah, it yeah, like, has yeah. kind of its own. Yeah, our office is fun. That's I, we are so off. I mean, we aren't even answering the questions. I don't even know why. I don't even know what the question was. No. We're talking about Japanese slot machines now and stuff like <laughs> no, that. No, Did we answer the question? Well, the question was, do you feel creative in the morning? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. I would say probably any time from 4.30 on, um, creative stuff could happen. Awesome. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Well, um, you know, I might as well just jump ahead to this question. You know, I, I was watching your videos um, uh, and pants on or off. Well, I was. There you go. I typically. Boy. <laughs> hey, drinking too, huh? All right, then. I think I think at some point you guys weren't wearing pants, but yeah, um, like ball shorts, for example. Well, my, that's my favorite. Just, yeah. I'll just put that on the table, right? We put a lot of like thought into that one. That was like a real video and everything. Looked like a real field. Yeah, <laughs> I, I was wearing a cup for it. Were you? Yeah, protection. Yeah. Well, the video got a little wild. You need to protect yourself. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, and anyways, I'm watching your videos, and you guys kind of look like it's funny because we referenced the office. You got the vi- the videos that you make. Uh, kind of look like the videos that Michael Scott would create on the show The Office. That's a compliment. Yeah, I take that as a compliment. It's not on purpose, though. It's just our lack of production skills. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I, I'm not commenting on, on that at all. I'm just saying, like, <laughs> it, it felt like an interesting... Like, that's what it reminded me of, and, and uh, yeah, but... so I don't know if we've ever made a serious video. No, no. no. I don't think at all. Right. Well, maybe that maybe you could, because my, my next question is, is if you're... If, if your office was a reality TV show, what would that be like? Or, or a TV show like The Office, where it? Well, we used to have, we used to have. Um, I mean, back before even UStream, Bob used to wear. 
<laughs> Bob used to carry around. Oh God, this is so long ago. I Justine like like a live cam twenty four hours a day. Oh, like a Justin TV sort of a thing. Yeah, it was yeah. called Bob Cam, and he had a freaking backpack. <laughs> Justine actually hooked me up with this company that wasn't Justin TV to do it. Uh huh. And I would uh, I would get thrown out of places all the time because it looked like I was carrying a bomb with me <laughs> constantly. He wore like a Ghostbusters proton pack that had an entire laptop in his back. This was when. Yeah. This was when? Three, four years ago? Yeah, which seems like not that long ago, but with technology and stuff, to have an actual live cam if you want to take it anywhere, now you pull your iPhone, boom, you're on Ustream, whatever like that. <laughs> Bob had to wear like a proton pack backpack with a laptop in it. And I remember the cord like came Ridiculous. out of his backpack and he had this old stinky pirate hat that he would always wear like this and it had a webcam the cam on it. that was like this big on it. Just I would like, just get kicked out of places. Too. Yeah, the like, worst just, ever. What are you doing? You'd always get kicked out of the mall because they think you were like going to look at like secrets for other companies yeah, and stuff something. like that. And be like, really? Is the fat guy in Foot Locker to like <laughs> steal Nike Taking ideas notes, or something yeah. like that? So, um, did you ever try to, to get airport? back to your original question though? There was plenty of times where we would have just the live cam going on in the office. Mm -hmm. But the problem is why we stopped doing it is because people would actually, you know, from the station, like our bosses and stuff, actually come in and talk about like legitimate stuff that was happening and stuff. So we would constantly have to turn the cam on and off mute and mute it, it and stuff yeah. like that. And then we're just like, all right, this kind of sucks. So yeah. even though it's like crazy, happy fun house. Still a job. Yeah, it's still a it's job. Still but there's still stuff all. Sure, that certainly. people shouldn't hear and stuff like that, I guess. Yeah. I don't know. Well, I was just thinking, you know, if you had, it, it seemed like it could be a really fun place if they shot it in the office style. Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, it yeah. would work. Yeah, it would work. If we had the, like, if we had like a real TV production company and stuff like that, yeah, we could put together a half an hour episode a week, easy. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, so what do you think about you know how how Howard Stern would do the TV thing for his? Have, is, is that something that you guys have ever considered? Or uh, actually, we actually got offered it before. It's like a done deal. But our station failed pretty bad. <laughs> we um, Comcast wanted to give us our own on-demand channel. Yeah, when Comcast on-demand was like first starting off and they had like nothing at all. They were giving shows away. Yeah, exactly. And it was like a done well, that's why we got <laughs> off the show. <laughs> it was yeah. like a done deal though and like everything was worked out and our station couldn't get money for the correct lighting that was like needed to make it happen and I think we needed HD cams at that time. I don't even know if HD cams, it was just like regular cams. Like yeah, we needed to buy quality. a camera yeah. and have better lighting and we were just like we failed. trying Trying to tell everybody like this would be awesome we could do like the little videos and people could watch them and stuff like that and they're just like yeah we can't afford lights and it's just like oh should have just gone to ikea i know I yeah know. i know i know we failed we should have for production quality i'm sure everyone who's a producer here is cringing at that yeah yeah but we shot a video with ikea lights before yeah but let's not talk about that one yeah <laughs> That one was a that one was a weird one. That's the closest we've ever come to seeing each other naked, too. By the way, yeah, we did a video in Bob's bathroom before. Um, I this was what four years ago, probably At like least. that. Um, it's really weird because a friend of ours was in town that never sees us. Like we've probably seen him like four or five times since high school. Right, like ten years ago, he comes in town for the weekend, and we're shooting a rap video. It's like our first one ever, too. The so. song was called "Ass to Face." It was about washing correctly. Like, how you, you, you should wash. wash your ass first and then your face. You should wash face to ass. That's you know? like a PSA. You have a, wash it's a life ball. lesson. Yeah. So, so we're we're in like bathing suits in Bob's bathroom, which is such a tiny bathroom. I mean, really, like from my shoulder to your shoulder, from this wall to the first chair, like tiny bathroom. Um, we have chocolate pudding to simulate poop. Uh huh. I'm wearing a speedo. Okay. We have laid out in the bathtub. Goggles on and stuff like that. So to get back to your point of lighting, we had <laughs> we had one of those like 9.99 IKEA lamps, like the pole lamp at the top. And we made our friend that came in town that hasn't seen us in years hold the lamp into the bathroom, <laughs> like from the hallway, <laughs> like sit, stand there and hold it. We like a it. boom mic, but it's yeah, a yeah, mic. like yeah, a boom okay. mic, but it was a boom IKEA light. Yeah. He's only come back like one time after that. 
That's a shame. That was quick. That was a quick trip. <laughs> well, you know, creativity just happens. And we're just like, we're going to shoot a rap video today if you're cool with that. And then it's just like, we couldn't get the lighting right. And we're just like, should we ask him to hold the light? Sure, why not? Yeah, that's bad. Creating yeah. memories, right? Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, that's kind of an interesting segue into, um, you know, I want to talk to you guys more about, you know, content creation because, you know, at PodCamp, a lot of people are content creators. And one of the reasons why I wanted to bring you guys in is to talk about you're constantly doing stuff. You're constantly um, creating all different types of content, and maybe you could maybe talk about that because you know, listening to your show, I know that you know you're doing commercials for spon- for sponsors and clients, and you know your own humor stuff, and I'm sure other different segments. And you know, you know, you're, you're, you have to stay on top of the news and the entertainment news and the world news. Like, so how how do you do that? Like, what's you know, how is that kind of? Um. I mean, our show pretty much doesn't shut off. We don't have a producer like other shows. It's really just me and Bob. So it's it's there's almost kind of like two shows that we do. We do the radio show, and then we just do other stuff. Like there's plenty of stuff that we'll tweet about or like videos like that. Like the video we just took in front of the red wall. If you just listen to our radio show, you may never know it even happened. You know, so there's kind of like two different things we do. But I mean. We just approach our radio show as kind of just like, what are people going to be going to the office and wanting to talk about with their coworkers and stuff, you know, in this city, Steelers, stuff like that, sports, talk about that, anything that's on TMZ or whatever, stuff like that. It's a lot of work, though. Like, it's not... Yeah, it is. Every night, I mean, we sit on iChat for three, four hours trying to go back and forth planning things. Yeah. I don't know if that's a creative process more than just like, holy crap, look what we found, you know? Well, I think it's important to talk about the work part of that because yeah. it's not just, it's not like you wake up and you turn on, you know, your computer and say, okay, well, what's the top story? Let's talk about yeah. it. Yeah. Right? Uh, there are radio shows that do that, though. <laughs> like, there are services that radio shows can buy behind the scenes, behind the scenes, where every morning you can show up and it'll print you off a show and show you the top. So, like, everything comes out all printed and you can honestly sit there and read it for four hours. But we try to approach things a little different. And I think that's why our show works. Like, yeah. People know. really do think, though, like we have an easy job because we show up at 6 o'clock and leave at 10. But little do they know we show up at like 4, leave the station probably 2 or 3 o'clock, go home, do whatever. And then, I mean, usually right now is when we would probably start planning tomorrow's show and stuff like that. So it's a lot of work yeah. for two people. And then to do anything extra, like shoot a rap video or something like that. Like something that really, at the end of the day, probably doesn't increase our ratings, you know, and probably doesn't really directly affect our job, you know, or anything like that. Like when it comes down to it, like what we actually get paid for, I don't know how much it does for it, but it's what we like to do and keeps us sane most of the time. <laughs> yeah, you know? exactly. No, definitely. No, but so, yeah, there's a lot of work that goes into our fun little four hours of radio time. Cool. But we put just as much work into like keeping our website updated and you know posting stuff on YouTube and keeping up with like just the social network aspect of stuff. It's almost at this point like a 50-50, 50-50. you know yeah. type stuff. I Even though the radio think- stuff is what really matters the most. Our company though, web's just as important almost now. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Sure. I certainly think that that contributes to who you are, you know, your as your, you know, as it relates to your job and your role there and your, your the freak show element of that, um, you know, keeping people connected to you all day. You know, it doesn't stop at ten and they can right. be with you throughout yeah. throughout the rest uh, of it. So I mean, that's why because I've been familiar with you guys on Twitter and you know, kind of checking out your website. And I typically haven't. I don't listen to the radio typically in the morning, so I've had to go out of my way to do that this week. And it's it's been interesting to hear the to like to see the contrast that is. First, you guys are the radio, but I knew you first as like not the radio side. It's yeah, like, that's yeah. kind of weird. So huh? it's interesting, definitely. It's Radio's a little disappointment then, huh? Because you have to listen to all the songs. I didn't say you're like putting that. words in my mouth right now. <laughs> people always ask us about like, why well, do you the, play so many songs? <laughs> yeah, people people like think me and Bob are sitting in the studio just like sitting More there just Gaga, like, yes. Oh my God, I need to hear Katy Perry "Teenage Dream" again, but I need to hear it now. Or I'm gonna freak out, and it's just like it's in a computer, and well, it plays you know, out what's its funny, own. It's like white noise to us now. We don't even. I cancel it out. People yeah. will call and be like, "What was that song we just played?" And I'll be like, "I have no clue. <laughs> I didn't hear it." 
<laughs> and I'm glad you brought that up because um, our our mail room will have Kiss on all day, mm-hmm. and every time I go into the mail room, it's Same like song. no, well, it's guaranteed that Lady Gaga is going to be on. Yeah, and uh, and you I, dance sometimes <laughs> uh, if I get a package, I'm like, all right, um, my eBay order is in, right? So I lock the mail room door. <laughs> and full dance. I get boxes and tape out, and turn myself into a character, <laughs> wrap myself in bubble wrap. Yeah, that's that's funny. So anyway, so I think some of the the, the the keynote things that you've done are some of your rap videos, and I was you know, getting myself familiar with them uh, this week. And uh, you know, you guys sound sound like a, a mix of like Jay Z meets Insane Clown Posse. Is a Ooh. little bit of a insane kind of clown a, posse. That one kind of hurt. No, <laughs> well, you must not Jay Z to insane clown posse. <laughs> well, I think I think you I think you misunderstand because there's a lot of production in there. And there is a little bit is. of a voodoo sort of a yeah. behind the scenes thing that goes on. That uh, yeah. a special sauce that they bring to the mix, which is what I think you. you and we do have some weirdos. A little bit of freaky show. Yeah, yeah, yeah so. that is true. That is true. That is I'll true. take it as a compliment. Yeah. So yeah. as as you know potentially future, you know, uh, hip-hop poets of America, um, the question on everyone's minds is, you know, do you write your own material? Yeah. Yeah. yeah Our station doesn't have a budget to have anybody write anything. <laughs> to pay <so>. rappers? <laughs> <laughs> we can't even afford t-shirts at this point. Jay-Z actually wrote ball shorts. Yes. <laughs> and uh, it didn't fit on the Blueprint 3, so he gave he it to us. <laughs> you know what's funny, though, is actually at a... Uh, I don't know why I'm going to tell this story, but just now that we're talking about Jay-Z, um, one like completely insane moment that we had when we were interns at the first radio station we ever started at, they had like a Christmas concert and stuff like that. And it was when Jay-Z was kind of just getting big, huge mainstream where he had like the like, hard knock life. It was like yeah. when he had the first blueprint album yeah. and stuff like that, where it's like your mom still knew who Jay Z was and stuff like that. Well, he was singing in concert, and me and Bob were like interns at the radio station, so we were like in the front row by like security and stuff like that. And um, we had talked to Jay Z before. Like, he went on on stage, like, interviewed him and stuff like that. I don't even know if we ever told this story, by the way, in, on, like, our show or anything. But we actually made a rap song to his song, Girls, 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 that was about, like, just random girls and stuff like that, like, trailer girls, country girls, and stuff like that. So it was, like, a parody of his own song. So we played it for him, and he thought it was pretty funny. Well, that night at the concert, the last song he did was Girls, 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 because that was, like, his popular song at the time. So here's Jay-Z up on stage, you know, all gangster and stuff like that. Here's me and Bob in the front row. He's finishing up Girls, 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 and actually hands the mic to Bob. (laughs) It doesn't even seem like a real moment. Like, even in my head right now, it's not even real, but it happened. He hands the mic to Bob and goes, go ahead and finish. And Bob just was just like... Love girls, 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 girls. Yeah. <laughs> and everybody like went nuts. Awesome too, and like yeah. the camera was on Bob so everybody could see it. And then like we were just like, you know, me and Bob were just out of high school at that time. We were still friends. We were like, oh man, that was the coolest thing ever. And we'd go backstage and all our bosses are like <laughs> And like even Jay-Z's record people and his camp was like And they're just like he never hands the mic to anyone. <laughs> like, how did that happen? Yeah. yeah. Still to this day, if you I see... I was fat and friendly in the front row. Right now. <laughs> Still to this day, if you see a Jay-Z guy. show, you never see him hand off the mic. Yeah. He handed it to Bob. Before. That's pretty sweet. I, yeah. Fun story. Yeah. All ties in rap music and us and Jay-Z. You know? Well, I'm glad I, I'm glad I question thought again? Jay-Z. Right? <laughs> I tripped off. But, um... Well, yeah, no, that's cool. And I, I think uh, one thing I appreciate is, you know, you guys aren't afraid to just do something, you know, be yourselves or, you know, look silly or, or whatever. And, yeah. You know, that's kind of part of who you are, part of, you know, your act, I think, you know, your show, which is great. Or maybe it's not part of your act, but it is exactly who you are. A lot of radio people don't like to be, they're almost like hermits, like don't like to be seen, don't like to be heard. I don't know why. I mean, I don't go home and, like, dance in my underwear in my kids' faces, like... A crazy person, which one, some people think we do, but uh, people yeah. do think we're pretty crazy. Yeah, though. like yeah. I go home and shoot. Well, there was a point. Out of my ass there was a stuff. point. I was looking for a new house, and there was a house for sale on Mike's block a couple months ago. And I went and looked at, it and people are just like, "You guys can't live together." Just like they'll call the cops on you all the time. Just like, <laughs> yeah. You guys are nuts. <laughs> really? Right. I go home and have, I have two kids, and you know we have dinner and the whole deal. 
I don't burn the house down usually. So yeah, everybody poops. Yeah, <laughs> it's the truth. And I'm sure you know what's weird. Here's a fun story. At work, when I have to, I shouldn't talk about poop. I lose followers when I talk about poop. But when I have to poop at work, I take my shirt off. I thought I'd share. Okay. <laughs> You've heard it here first, maybe? Is that somebody start a clap there? I thought a clap kind of started. Same yeah. thing, same thing. Yeah. The same thing. Just doesn't feel natural. Sorry. It's weird. Sometimes if I know like serious work is gonna happen, I'll start taking clothes off. I don't know why that is. Maybe you feel like you're not gonna be as sweaty. But when you go and know it something, it feels weird. If you know serious something serious is gonna happen, you know? Like I don't always come in the stall with me, hopefully, you know. <laughs> If I ever pass out or something, though, and something happens and they find me, I'm just shirtless. All right. This, okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> I've wondered that, though. Like, if you die pooping at work, they're going to find you like that. Yeah, that's you a bad know? way to go. You can't have any secrets on you or anything like that. Either. You're naked pooping already. It doesn't get much worse. <laughs> what if I find you? Well, my next question my is... Um... Back up. <laughs> My next my question is technical <laughs> difficulties. Okay. You know, which maybe, you know, you know, you guys, you know, obviously do a lot. So I wanted to ask you, like, so it seems like it's like you met, you mentioned this before, you know, people probably have this impression. It's all fun and games. It's all play. Like maybe you could touch on what are maybe the challenges or technical difficulties that, that you do have to, um, to not enough with. hours in a day, uh, um, no budget for anything like that we want to make happen. Yeah, like the Comcast thing. There's just like so many things that even if we can come up, we don't have the ways and means to somehow make it happen or something like that. Mm -hmm. Like, how long have we been telling like our bosses we want to put like a full, a full rap album on iTunes? Sell it for charity. Yeah. And, it's just, it's, and like... Like know. the simplest things that everybody could grasp in here and actually make happen is just like company-wise. Or like, we have an iPhone app, but we can't release it. It's done done just can't release yeah we have an awesome freak show iphone app and no one has it because our company said we can't put it out because they want to like concentrate on the the iheart radio app which is really cool because you can like listen live to just like a crap ton of stations on your phone but they like see that. an app that would focus on our show it would be like a competitor to that app so they they jinxed it mm, even so, though it's done ready to go so that's a lot of our struggle is stuff like that, though, where like we're yeah, two steps ahead stuff. of like our company because our company is a pretty big radio company, media sure. company. You know, we're two steps ahead of like say a guy who's doing a morning show in the middle of Nebraska or Ohio or something. You know, so it, and the company tries to keep everybody on the same playing base, and at the same time, we're trying to be. You know, we're trying to like Twitter is still new to people, and radio is just amazing. You know, yeah. So that's a lot of struggle. Well, in any industry, you know, and and. I know that uh, it, it do, does take truly creative people and you know innovators to that like that you have to deal with the same kind of your own problems and you know corporate BS that everybody else has to but you know you don't, you don't always see that like you're the, and you have audiences that probably don't see that so yeah. you know I, I know that in my world that that stuff happens all the time it's just you know one thing after the other it's probably different than you but you know you everyone has their own struggles that our, they have to overcome I think our boss reads our tweets which is amazing that we still have Twitter accounts <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> but, there's been times when certain things have been addressed you know <laughs> yeah we yeah. don't censor ourselves very much. Yeah. It's 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 you it's probably very. Tell. I just told you I poop with my shirt off. It's it's hard to, uh, at some points, still realize you have a job and work for a company, and stuff like that. Um, it's weird to think they hand us like, I don't know what our station's worth. Probably a couple million dollars. You know, they just hand it over to us every morning. It's it's hard to like you know, it's crazy ball shorts and the whole thing. But at the end of the day, it's just like well, we're in charge of something that's worth millions and millions of dollars and it's all up to us not to say cuss words or do anything stupid to lose a license, you know. There's a balance. Yeah. yeah. There's a balance at all. Certainly. So, I mean, I want to ask you maybe a little bit more about the new media community. Um, uh, how do you feel? I mean, you were at PodCamp Pittsburgh 4, so that's kind of the last time PodCamp's officially seen you guys. Uh, how has new media changed since, um, since then, do you think? Man, in just a few years, everything's just more mainstream now, you know? Yeah, yeah. Like, my grandma's on Facebook. It's kind of weird. 
She actually taught crap to me the other she day did. on Facebook, too. Did you see Yesterday, that? Yesterday, right? What was that about? Um, I was telling her we were doing a, the hate the, a charity. Yeah, the, the alley in For uh, the, the orphanage in Haiti that Jamie and Allie McMurray. Yeah, what's the name there? of that? T. Carnell. Yeah, well, Tomorrow, I posted like on uh, my Facebook page, like, yeah, me and Bob are, for seniors are emceeing this, like, you know, uh, orphanage in Haiti thing and this benefit and stuff like that. And my grandma's just like, yeah, why don't you concentrate on the United States and the seniors and stuff like that? I'm like, oh my God, is my grandma talking crap to me on Facebook? I think, like, things like, um, like, just social media in general, like Twitter and Facebook, have become more popular now. So it's like, you know, the a lot of the stuff that was even just new a couple of years ago that people were just kind of starting off on are more just mainstream and now it helps us make our show like a 24 hour show too sure constant you know we took a dancing video in front of the red wall and sent it out to people just kind of stay in front of everybody you know but yeah, even though our show's only six to ten it just kind of continues there's a lot of things too that like that we we do now with our show and like social media and that we weren't even doing back at PodCamp for like if we got a pair of tickets to you know something that I don't know Lady Gaga something that they just gave us to give away on the show or something like that a lot of times now almost 50% of the time we're you know putting it on Twitter or Facebook or something like that because you know the radio ratings are, are ratings too but like you know like we said it's 50 percent on the radio now and kind of 50 percent you know online stuff that we do so whereas before we would always just be like all right well call now and we'll give you tickets there's a whole more different than audience. half the time yeah. now we're just like hit like on facebook and then we'll pick somebody you know or do like a twitter lotto thing yeah to see if we can get to trend just yeah. for fun well has that increased your audiences do you think i don't know it it definitely has increased like our our online audience yeah, kind of yeah. and stuff like that you know i mean our our like freak show facebook fan page has like a lot more like fans of it than like a, a lot of even like entire like we have more people that like us on facebook than our own radio station does which is kind of weird and stuff but like <laughs> I think that increases it though because if people are just going to like win something and they hit like and then all of a sudden they see who we really are and kind of like what we're all about like they just came there to win something but then next thing you know they see Bob in front of the red wall shirtless video that they probably just got like an hour ago or whatever. They never even know happened like yeah. by just listening to our and show. And maybe they never listened to our show and are just like am I missing something let me turn them on in the morning so it's kind of just like to us, it all ties together. Even though we may have not gotten the ratings for giving away something on the air, eventually it'll all just come back around, you know. It's the circle of life. Yeah. No, I think it's great. I mean, I think you guys are a really good example of how, um, you know, you're taking what you have, which is kind of, you know, this intellectual material, this radio show, and then just spinning the world around in all, all of those regards. Um, so, I mean, I guess, where do you see it going in the future uh, with new media? Uh, in general, maybe have you thought about that. Our show wise, in general, I don't know. Man, in general, I think it's not. I don't. I don't think technology is that far off where you're just going to need one. You're just going to need one thing. You know, everybody has a computer now and a phone and a TV, and you can kind of already see it all coming together. You know, you can watch YouTube videos on your TV and stuff. Somehow, some way, somehow all, connect all the dots. Where it's, it's all going to come together, you know. Yeah. Where it's going to be like, because at night, future, I sit there, <laughs> the future, I sit there, and I watch TV. But I got my laptop on my lap and like my cell phone with me too. And it's just like, all right, somehow, some way, in five, ten years, it's all just going to be one thing together. We're going to have a hovercraft, hoverboard, <laughs> and stuff too. And there will be hoverboards. That's cool. Well, that's cool. I have, I have one, one final question, um, uh, and it's something to kick to the sports direction. So, Pittsburgh Power coming to Pittsburgh? Thoughts? Thumbs up? Thumbs down? Um, I don't know. It's a good excuse to go to the arena and get The arena's going. fun, yeah. <laughs> I guess. I don't know. I'm sure it'll work. Why yeah. wouldn't it? You know? The new arena's nice enough. 
when I told people when we first took a tour of Consol Energy Center, the new arena is so nice they can pretty much do anything in there, I think, and people will just show up, you know. Everybody likes football here. I don't think it'll be like crazy, like people will be wearing jerseys and everything and just like, yeah, Pittsburgh power, it's awesome. I'm going to flash back this video in like five years and you're going to be the idiot. Yeah, I know, right? Yeah. Yeah, arena football is just going to be like the Steelers in here. No, I think it's uh, it's it's kind of a cool idea. I don't think it'll be too crazy, but like I said, an excuse to go to the arena and get drunk. Cool, that always works. It's always it's good. It's going against the Pirates too, you know. <laughs> yeah, that's a good that's a good marketing strategy too. You know, why watch the Pirates when there's football inside? Yeah. Wow. Great. Well, I want to thank you guys for coming on. This has been fantastic. Um, before I'm going to open it up for a minute for questions, but before I want to have a gift uh, for you guys as my uh, first guest. Oh <laughs> yes, sex. What a gentleman you are. Sex, sex, sex. Mm. I got these from Pittsburgh Finest, uh, oh, right outside the McDonald's on Smithfield Street. So very so nice. Very <laughs> you, might, you might want to rinse those off before you um, <laughs> get too friendly with them. But uh, you're a real romancer. You should have opened the interview with this. Yeah, really. <laughs> We're all smiley and giddy Just wave now. them in our face. <laughs> I can only dim the lights so low. So, I, so yeah. But uh, no, thank you guys for coming on. It, it's great to, to see you guys doing it and uh, have a lot of fun. So. <laughs> I'll just give you a moment. <laughs> Anybody have any questions? Is any of you guys anything fun? Yeah, seriously, you guys can really. Yeah. I sleep three hours a day, honestly. I go to bed 11 30, 12 o'clock, and wake up at 3 30. Yeah, we really don't sleep much. I'm a robot. Sometimes I look at when my last tweet was sent and like my first tweet was sent. And there will only be like a few people that tweeted in between. I'm just like, oh man, I'm, this is too much. But no, we don't really sleep very often. I don't know why. Yeah, I just get all pumped up on that stuff and just sit there in my bed and just can't go to sleep. But no, we really just, I don't know it's why. It's always been like that, yeah. Yeah, ever since we started doing We used to do a night show before we came here and did the morning show, so it's like completely different. Like we would go to bed at 6 a.m. and sleep till 3 in the afternoon. So I don't know if we ever, even though it's been like eight years now, I don't know if we've ever like became morning people where we go to bed at like 8 o'clock, be like, oh, I gotta wake up real early. It's just never happened, I don't know. Yeah, when we first started, we were asking like, because we knew plenty of people who did like morning radio and stuff, and we were like asking them and stuff, you know, like, how is it, uh, like how often do you Start sleep, and people are just like, well, you go to bed at like 9 o'clock and stuff like that. I'm like, 9 o'clock, which, like American Idol's not even over at 9 o'clock, you know? Like, how am I going to miss that crap because i got to sleep? So I think that's why we don't sleep, too, because, you know, there's so much stuff still going on. Like, the average person's still up watching TV I at think night. lack of sleep adds to our insanity, too, which yeah. is a good thing, probably. Yeah. As long as we don't crash our cars driving in, falling asleep at the wheel, but we should be okay. Hasn't happened yet. Mm. Tomorrow morning. Anything else? What other markets have you been in? Um, Detroit. That's where we're originally from. Don't hate us, everybody. Sorry, but um, it's worse in Detroit for everybody. Yeah, it does. Philadelphia. So yeah, we did a year in Detroit, kind of like interns, and then we ended up on the night show, and then we did two years, two and a half years in Philadelphia. I think two years in Philadelphia doing a night show, and then we came here, and then we've been here for coming up on eight. So if you Google some of the stuff we did in Philadelphia, yeah, I know. I'm surprised that the police record and everything didn't show up. <laughs> I've done some stupid things, trust me. And I, okay. the next time I have guests on, I will check the police um, the <laughs> yeah. crime report. The water. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good. I, um, I remember finding you guys. I think it was your first year. I was driving to Detroit, and I was driving down there. It was really early in the morning. It was Wednesday, and we still did. Oh, very good. And yeah. we played the track at Walmart. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. Like, yeah. I got in a lot of trouble for that. Yeah. <laughs> hump day, hump day had to end because uh, Target, like the company that everybody loves, like stores Target, they were gonna pull all their advertising for our company, which is like 1,200 stations nationwide, because I did Hump Day in one of their stores. Uh, that's how it ended. Yeah. That's pretty much the the quick stop story to Hump Day. Yeah. 
I, going back through our whole radio careers, though, there's some stuff. I mean, we used to, when we were in Philadelphia doing the night show, there was plenty of times where we would go to the show just going like, how can I get arrested? How can we get Bob arrested tonight without like doing anything that illegal? Like doing something funny that would get him arrested, you know? Um, like what I remember one day before our show, remember when the X games used to be in like Philadelphia all the time and stuff like that. Well, the X games, people gave us like this huge, stupid skateboard. It, it was, was like a mountain board or something, like extreme. Yeah, it was like... Big wheels It was stuff. like four feet long with like big wheels. Something that could hold my body weight. Four wheels, so we're just like, what the hell do we do with this? And then it was just like, why doesn't Bob put on a cape and just take it down to Schuylkill, which... It's the main express know, way. In Philadelphia, the Schuylkill's no joke at We come on at 6 p.m. like during rush hour, so I'm in the right lane just, you know, yeah. skating away. <laughs> that didn't last long. I think I think a lot of the problem with us is like we never faked anything. Like where most radio people would just be like, let's just act like Bob let's got fly arrested over the city. and no. stuff like that, you know. Um, no, Bob really like has a police record for doing stupid stuff and stuff like that. <laughs> the best Hump Day story I would tell you though happened in Philadelphia because for those people who don't know what Hump Day is, Bob used to go out on Wednesday and really just go to public places, drop his pants, and start start humping random things. Um, one day, <laughs> I miss those days. <laughs> One day he was at a humping at a mattress store, <laughs> and yep. it was like right before the mattress store. This story doesn't even seem real. It was right before the mattress store was closing, so like the last five minutes, Bob's you know out of bed going to town, hump day, and he's got like heart boxers on or something like they that. They kick so me out. They kick him out, and then you know the store closed. It was closing time. When Whatever. they kick me out, though, they call the police. Yeah. So Bob comes out. There's cops everywhere and stuff like that. They ask for license and registration to the car. Mattress store had already closed. Bob can't find his wallet. Bob actually humped his wallet out of his pants. <laughs> It was on the floor of the mattress store. You can see inside, nobody answering the doors, of course, at the mattress store. And they actually impounded the station vehicle because they said Bob was, like, driving without a license and didn't have insurance. I'd go to court the next morning. It was just bad. Yeah, he actually humped away the station vehicle and stuff. <laughs> yeah, it was just bad. Um, I mean, when we first got here, I think, radio's changed a lot since we started to i mean not just from the stuff we can say and can't say and stuff like that but for some reason radio companies don't like the waste bail money and stuff anymore like <laughs> it's sad but like i mean there, there's plenty of like high profile like radio shows where it's just like radio used to be where if you would get fired for something you would go to a bigger market and stuff like that it was almost just like a challenge to do stupid stuff. That was stuff our goal anymore. most of the time. Oh, Early yeah. Radio. We would love to get fired, you know, and stuff like that. But, um, you know, radio has just changed so much. You know, like I said, radio companies don't like to pay bail anymore and stuff like that. But <laughs> what else did you do? I remember... Uh, the miniskirt thing was just bad. Yeah, miniskirt here was kind of when... It was the baddest one here. That's when we stopped, like, everything. Yeah. There was a... Uh, Something in New York City we read on the air about uh, them banning men wearing mini skirts on the streets or something like that because it was indecent. So I went on the uh, parkway, like right before the Fort Pitt Tunnel, and I was standing there. This is just an awful story. I was standing there in a, in a leather mini skirt with a sign that said, Honk if you could see my nuts. Which, like thinking back, it's just not a good idea to start out with. You know, you did have a bag of peanuts, though. Yeah, it didn't so matter. So when the cops came in to be like, I don't mean testicles. It didn't matter. Sir. The cops. I have a bag of peanuts, but your dumbass forgot the peanuts too. Yeah. So it was just like that was supposed to be the whole joke. You're like, yeah. Right. So state police show up, and I'm standing there. I'm on. We're live on the air with me. Like I'm talking back to the station. He comes walking up, and the state police officer's voice went over our air through my cell phone and his commander and everybody heard it and I guess they it could have been federal wiretapping of some kind and they really arrested me and took me to like real state police jail and it was scary best, best show like, ever though because we actually got a lawyer to get me out by 10 a.m. and got 
Bob out of jail, and he was back by the end of the show. Yeah. Like, right before 10 o'clock, too. It was like... It was freaking planned or something. That that was that most was radio funny. shows would have just faked that and stuff. But that was when our show had to like change. That's when we had like bad meetings. Like we thought yeah. we were gonna get fired, and I probably should have, but they kept us. So they call it like a come to Jesus meeting where bosses <laughs> just kind of. I actually had to sign a paper uh, as a part of the statement saying I w- I wouldn't be on the Parkway like <laughs> anything like if they catch me straight to jail. It's just bad. It's bad man. <laughs> That's a shame for one. I, like, they took me to jail in a miniskirt, too, which is... <laughs> I didn't even change. A giant 300-pound fat guy with no shirt on and a miniskirt going to real state police jail. It's just like... It's just a bad day scenario. I, I hate to see the mugshot, you know. It's probably shameful. So how many times have you been arrested for the show? Did you get a... Did you technically get arrested that night at King of Prussia Mall? Yeah, yeah, that night I got arrested. This one's even. By the way, this than... is awesome too because I would probably I would come up with most of these ideas and be like, "Here's what you should do tonight." <laughs> you know, I I have no in show encounters. With... Is anybody familiar with King of Prussia Mall? It's like Philly's like fanciest mall, like... very fancy mall and stuff like that. I don't even know what caused this to happen. <laughs> Just one of those nights where you're just sitting around. This might like, offend some people. I'm sorry if it does. <laughs> I had a strap on dildo. And I thought it was a good idea to go and try to return it as a shoehorn. And try to talk the guy that was working into taking it back. Say, I remember you always said, my wife bought me this and it's for not Christmas working. and it's not working. <laughs> my wife bought me this shoehorn. I don't know if she bought it from here or not. I would walk in with like a bag, like a Christmas like gift bag and like pull it out and set it on the table all normal. <laughs> Yeah, they took me Which is kind of sad because we, we had our timing off because this was before, like, YouTube and everything. Yeah, and there was, like, like that. Yeah. Before Ustream and stuff like that. Ahead of our time. Yeah. So, you can, I mean, I can't even imagine some of this stuff. They, uh, right they put the strap-on dildo in an evidence bag. <laughs> 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 it's just bad. It was a bad situation. By the way, this is the classiest little pod camp yeah. session that you will have. <laughs> <laughs> all, all I can uh, yeah. think of is, um, yeah, you know, I we did. might not have any more I of these after. <laughs> <laughs> But, yeah, you, is your sponsor listening? I'm sorry. <laughs> so, are there any more questions? Yeah, any more questions? Yeah. Alright, well, I want to thank you kind guys. Kind of stunned everybody with the two <laughs> last stories There's there. no follow-up questions to that one. That's the, that's the night ender right there. They don't want to know what else is going to happen. No, yeah. it doesn't get much worse than that. I'm well, well let me thank you guys again for coming on. It's been a pleasure. Uh, mm. Certainly. And, thank you for uh, the roses. Yeah. yeah. Beautiful flowers. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I want to thank... Um, uh, Space Gallery again, the Cultural Trust for for having us uh, and sponsoring this evening here, so we could be in this great great space. Want to thank uh, Concert O, a brand new social networking site that allows you to simultaneously publish up to ten webcams from different locations. That's uh, what's next. That's what's next. Yeah, yeah you asked us. There's right the answer. There. There they're like Skype on steroids, and they're web based and free, and in Pittsburgh. Nice. So, oh, nice. So yeah, thank you to uh, Concert O. Uh, I want to thank uh, Podcast. Camp Pittsburgh organizers, everyone who helped uh, make tonight happen, Mike, Missy, Rob, Jenny, uh, and uh, and everyone else who helped with that. Uh, and yeah, of course, thank you guys for being so great. Thank you.